Welcome to the fifth session of the module 5. Now here actually uh, uh, in the previous class we have discussed uh, different uh, milling uh, machines that is a vertical milling machine as well as the horizontal milling machines. Let us discuss what all the different types of milling operations can be performed on this milling machines. Different milling uh, operations or processes that can be performed on this milling uh, machines are like a plane milling, the form milling, the end milling, the straddle milling, the slot milling, the gang milling and then the angular milling. These are all the different uh, operations that we can perform it. Now let us uh, uh, go one by one. The plane milling plane milling or it is also called as a slab milling. As you can see this in the sketch, what happens here? The thickness, if you have a material like something like this, if you have a material something like this, I want to reduce the thickness of this. Maybe this is of 5 mm. I want to make it 3 mm plate completely. Then <coughs> I will go for the plane milling or a slab milling. Where this multiple cutting uh, tool, if this is a tool, so what happens? This will keep moving like this. This will rotating and it will be keep moving like this so that it removes the material. Then one time it comes back and it just moves like this. So that what happens? The thickness will be reduced of the particular plate. So the work table is the one it, that will be a magnetic uh, work table, magnetic chuck it will be. So it holds it very firmly or it can also be fixed. Okay, it may be fixed with the mechanical method or it can also be fixed with uh, magnetically. That makes the, the workpiece to be cold or rigid. The flap milling is the operation of producing a flat or a horizontal surface parallel to the axis of rotation. That means if it is rotating like this, if any workpiece um, for the tool is rotating like this, in the same direction the material will be removed in the same direction it, it, the material will be removed that is what we just meant say if you see this sketch first sketch the workpiece is rotating in the clockwise direction it is rotating in the clockwise direction and along the direction of rotation it is just removing the material you can see the material that is going to remove machine to surface which is shown it in white color is it clear now this is called as a million arbor. Arbor is something which supports the tool. That's it. Arbor is if if my fingers are the tool, then my hand, the forehand is nothing but an arbor which supports this. That's it. It's a clear. And uh, this arbor will be fixed to the spindle. That spindle will makes it to uh, rotate. That's it. A slab milling is done to remove the material from the upper surface of the workpiece. Upper surface of the workpiece, it cannot go inside of the workpiece and remove it. That is on the upper surface of the workpiece. The slab milling cutter is held in the arbor and it may have a straight or a helical tips. It can have a straight hair or it can also have a helical. Helical means it will have a hair. If you see the second sketch, you can see this direction of the, uh, the design of this uh, teeth. It may be of a, a straight or it may be helical. Helical, in most of the cases, we use only helical teeth in order to have a smooth surfaces and a smooth removal of the material. Both cutters can be used to generate the flat surfaces. The required depth of cut can be adjusted by raising the table or knee and the feed is given by the saddle. That means, as we can show, this is majorly used in a horizontal milling machines, whereas the tool will be fixed over here. The depth of cut will be adjusted by making, by moving the workpiece up and down, up and down. If you want, this has to be moved 5 mm, then I will move it, I will move it, 5 mm above so that what happens then I will feed it it removes the 5 mm whereas in uh, lathe operations what happens we will move the tool whereas here the workpiece is been moved by using a knee or it may be by the uh, table 
Are you okay? So this is called as a plain milling or a slab milling. The end milling. End milling is a process that is used to mill the slots or the pockets. Hole is a different and the pockets are different. Please be careful. Hole will have a, a limited amount of diameter and the depth of cut will be there. This is a slot and this drilling holes is extensively only in circular direction, in circular shapes. Whereas this end milling will be made up of in circular or a curvature or it may be a square. Any shape can be made it with the pocket and key ways. In such a way that the axis of the milling cutter is perpendicular to the surface of the workpiece. Now there it is in the in the slab milling it is different. Now here it is perpendicular to the surface of the workpiece. The milling operation when used for keyway cutting as shown in figure the advantage of the end milling operation is that we can achieve the depth of cut of nearly of the diameter of the milling. And that is the one advantage and this has been used can be inside the material itself not only on the surface even that can be used in the inside depth also that is the use of end mill and this end mills can also be used in order to remove an excess of material at the edges of the plate say for example if you want to cut this like this then it can be used then the slot milling slot milling is the operation of producing slots like a T slots plain slots, a dough tile slots, etc. Uh, in work uh, table fixtures, the other work holding devices, the operation may be performed using either uh, end milling cutter, T slot cutter, dough tile cutter or side milling cutter. Okay. Now the type of cutter that is being selected depends upon the shape of the slot to be produced. Two separate milling cutters are required for the milling key slots. Initially, a side cutter or an end milling cutter is used to cut the throat. Starting from one end of the workpiece to its other end, a T slot milling cutter is then used to cut the head space to the desired dimensions. Similar procedure is also allowed, followed for cutting a dough tile slot. But a dough tile slot cutter is used in place of T slot cutter. So this is the use of the slot milling which is used in order to make the slots. Okay, now uh, let us uh, come to the new uh, advanced technique of uh, numerical control machines which we also call it as NNC machines. Now here the numerical control can be defined as a form of programmable automation in which process is being controlled by number of, by numbers, letters and symbols. In numerical control, the numbers form a program of instructions designed for a particular work or part or a job. When job changes, the program of instruction changes. This capability to change a program for each new job gives a numerical control its flexibility. Okay, so instead of controlling it manually, we will control it with the use of a program. And these programs have been returned using numbers from 1 to 99, and then the letters, different letters, and then the symbols. Basic components of uh, numerical control systems. An operational numerical control system consists of the following three basic components. One is the program of instructions. Second one is a controller unit, also called as a machine tool unit. And machine tool or other control processes. MCU or it may be machine tool is the one which actually does the work. So what happens? The program of instructions serves as input to the controller unit which in turn commands the machine tool or other process to be controlled. Now here carefully, if you consider the machine tool, it can be a drilling machine, it can be a milling machine or it can be a lathe also. Okay. So what happens, we will write a program of instructions in a computer or it can be in a punch tape also. We will have a program of instructions. Say for example, 
I will uh, write the G00X10, Y10. That means that this command makes the tool, I'm um, sorry, a tool, the cutting tool to move X direction 10 mm and Y direction 10 mm. This is a one command. So second like this, I will define G03S100. That means I will make the spindle speed to rotate at 100 RPMs. Is it clear? So such kind of commands using numbers, letters and symbols will be given. And that program of instructions will be given. And that will be sent to the controller unit. Controller unit uh, are nothing but a mediator or they are also called as a heart of the uh, numerical control system which reads this program of instructions and it will interpret it and it will give the instructions. It will take that in a software as a database and then it will interpret it. It will give the command to the tool. Tool is nothing but something like a hand. Is it clear? It is nothing but the hand. It is something program of instructions is nothing but our eyes. Instructions are something like our eyes. Controller is our brain. And machine tool is our hands. I will see something. The ball is coming. My mind will read. The ball is coming with so and so speed. And catch it with my hands. This, this, this is what? How this numerical control system also works. The, they are called nothing but three uh, basic uh, components of numerical control systems. They are program of instructions, controller unit and machine tools. Is it clear? Program of instructions, if you consider the program of instructions, the program of instructions is the detailed step by step of instructions which tells the machine what to do. From the switching on the spindle, the speed, feed, depth of cut, coolant on, coolant off, material movement from x direction, y direction, z direction, removing material and then cleaning and coming back to this position and switching off the spindle, everything will be given by step by uh, step instructions. It is coded in numerical or a symbolic form and some type of input medium that can be interpreted by the control unit. Control unit yad nafta makoloko. Otherly, what we will do it is we will write down the program interpreted by control unit. The most common one is the one inch wide punch tape. A one inch wide a punch tape will be there, something like uh, you can see it in uh, olden days in the cassettes. So, similar such kind of thing will be there. Okay, a one inch wide uh, punch tape over the years. Other forms of input media have been used including punched cards, magnetic tape and even 35 mm motion picture pins are also been used. There are two other methods of input to the MC system which should be mentioned. The first is by manual entry of the instructional data to the controller unit. This is the time of consuming and is rarely used except as an auxiliary means of controller or when one or very limited number of parts to be made. The second method of input is by means of direct link with the computer. This is called as a direct numerical control which is called as DNC. Where what happens? The method input environment direct links will be used with the computer. That is what we call it as a DNC. Okay, next one is a controller uh, unit which is called as the heart of the system. The second basic component of NC system is a controller unit. This consists of electronics and hardware that read and interpret the program of instructions and convert it into mechanical actions of the machine tools. The typical elements of the controller unit include the tape reader a data buffer and then a signal output channels to the machine tools. So this inside the control uh, unit itself we use a tape reader. A tape reader is the one which reads the programs that is being written by the program of instruction and a data buffer and it will store this uh, data and it will read with it will compare with the buffer which has been already the data which is already available in its memory and it will interpret it. 
then it will give some signal output to the tool according to the program of instructions and the sequence controls the coordinate the overall operation of the foregoing elements the tape reader is an electrical mechanical device for the winding and reading the punched tape containing the program of instructions that is the use of this control unit or it is also called as machine control unit is it clear now the signal output the channels are connected to the servo motor and other controller uh, controls in the machine tools that means the signal output from the machine control unit will be given to the servo motor or some controlling units of the uh, machine tools is it clear most nc tools today are provided with the positive feedback controls for this purpose and are referred as closed loop systems the closed loop systems is whatever the signal output is being given from the mcu will be given to the servo motors or the machine tools it will perform the work and it will also have a feedback system that means what is the step is been done what is the step is been so it is something like giving an information and giving a feedback or the status of the work however there has been a growth in even in the open loop systems also which do not make use of a feedback signals to the control unit see if they use a feedback system then it is called as a closed loop system if the feedback system is not been used then it is called as a open loop system feedback system should be used in order to get a more accurate and precision work the advocates of the uh, open loop concept claim that the reliability of the system is great enough that the feedback controls are not needed and in few cases they just uh, don't use that actually the machine tools the third basic component of the numerical control system is the machine tools or other uh, controlled process it is a part of the nc system which performs a useful work in the most commonly a uh, common example of the nc system one design to perform machining operations the machine tool consists of the work table and spindle as well as the motors and controls necessary to drive them it also includes the cutting tools work fixtures and other auxiliary equipment needed in machining operations so ultimately they are called as a hands of a cnc machines or nc machines advantages are being they are highly uh, productive they are with a high precision with a better quality of control of products multi operational facilities or tasks does not require a skilled operator for this okay let's know what are the disadvantages high initial cost of equipments maintenance cost required a skilled person to write a program actually to execute a program tapes tend to wear and become dirty on frequent use and thus may become unreadable and then the major one more disadvantage is punched tape needs to be recycled for each product of the batch obviously based on the as the product changes the punched tape also needs to be changed and this can be overcome by this uh, cnc that is computer numerical control system so in this numerical control what happens when the product is being changed the punched tape also has to be changed okay now we are just introducing the computer numerical control it is defined as a numerical control system whose machine control unit is based on a dedicated microcomputer rather than an hardware wired controller the latest computer controller for the uh, cnc features high speed processors large memories solid state uh, flash memory improved servos and the bus architectures so that way, some some uh, controllers have the capability to control the multiple machines Okay. The features of CNC will have uh, its features of that will also have 
a computer numerical control system which does include an additional features beyond what it has been feasible with some conventional hardwired numerical control system. The whatever the, the drawback that has been incurred using this numerical control with the punch tip can be overcome with using a fast and advanced computers which interfaces and buffers with respect to the machine control unit which can be changed at any frequent changes in the product design. So what happens even in the numerical control whenever the product changes that punch tape needs to be changed in order to give a different set of instructions. Whereas in the computer numerical control while the process itself we can change it. That is the beauty and advantage of this uh, computer numerical control which includes the features many of which are standard on most of the CNC MCUs includes the following. The one is the storage of more than one part program. Hundreds thousands of part programming can be saved okay, with improvements in the computer storage technology and neither CNC controllers have a sufficient capacity to store multiple programs. That is one advantage. And the second one is various forms of program inputs. Whereas a conventional hardware or MCUs are limited to punch to tape as the input medium for entering part programs. CNC controllers generally possess a multiple data entry capabilities such as punch to tape. If the machine stop still uses a punch to tape, a magnetic tape, a floppy diskets, floppy diskets also we are not using it and even the magnetic tapes are also not we are not, not using it because we are being advanced with an advanced technology with RS232 communications with external computers and manual data inputs that is the most advanced technology uh, even when it comes to the, the other features program editing at the machine tool level itself. at the machine tool I am not talking about program of instructions I am not talking about MCUs I am talking about in the machine tools when practically during the process if you find some problems it can be edited in the machine tools itself is that clear so this CNC permits a part programming to be edited while it is resides in the machine control unit computer memory hence the program can be tested and corrected entirely at the machine side rather than being returned to the programming office for corrections so there itself the corrections can be made Okay, now diagnostics. Many modern CNC systems possess a diagnostics capability that monitors certain aspects of the machine tools to detect malfunctioning, malfunctions or signs of impeding the malfunctions or the diagnosis system breakdowns. Communication interface with the trend towards the interfacing and networking in plants today most modern cnc controllers are equipped with the standard rs232 or other communication interface to link the machines to other computers or the computer driven devices now if you consider this uh, the mcu is a hardware that distinguishes computer numerical control from the conventional mc the general configuration of this MCU in a CNC is been illustrated in this figure where the MCU contains consists of the following components and the subsystem central processing unit, memory and input output interface, control for machine tools, access and spindle speed and the fifth one is the sequence controls for other machine tool functions. Okay. Now it will have a memory which will operate it under ROM, random access, uh, access memory and random uh, uh, that is random access memory that is a RAM and read only memory will also be there. Read only memory which uses operating system and random access memory uses part programming. And then we will also have a, a central processing unit which will be there in the CPU. It is nothing but a CPU and input output uh, interfaces will be there which operate uh, in which operator panel and tape reader will be used. 
This will be separated by the system bus. Machine tool controls, which controls the position, con position of the control, spindle speed control, and sequence controls, which will control the coolant on, on and off, fixturing and clamping, and tool changer will also be used in the sequence control systems. It's a wonderful one. Uh, this is how this machine control unit will be operated. Now, when it comes to the central processing unit, the central processing unit is the brain of the machine control unit. It manages the other components in the machine control unit based on software contained in main memory. The CPU can be divided into three sections. One is a control section, arithmetic logic unit and intermediate access memory. Is that clear? So the memory will be there wherein which the, the immediate access memory in the CPU is not intended for storing CNC software. Is that clear? So a much greater storage capacity is required for the various programs and data needed to operate CNC systems. Input and output interface. The input and output interface provides communication between the various components of the CNC systems. So the input that it takes from the set of instructions and then the output which gives rise to machine tools. Other computer systems and the machine operator. As it the name suggests, the input and output interface transmits it transmits and receives data and signals to and from to and from the external devices. So it just communicates with the external devices. It gives out the signals and it also receives a, it may be a feedback or it may be a data and signals in terms of that. It just takes it. It controls for the machine tools, axis and spindle speed. These are hardware components that control the position and velocity that is the feed rate of each machine axis as well as the rotational speed of the machine tool spinning. Sequence controls for other machine tools functions in addition to control of the table position, feed rate and spindle speed, several additional functions are accomplished under part program control. These auxiliary functions are generally on or off actuations, interlocks and discrete numerical data. To avoid overloading of CPU, a programmable logic controller is sometimes used to manage the input-output interfaces. So, it will have its own software which will be developed in order to which provides an ease for understanding the machine to the system as well as it is understanding for the one who are interpreting or writing the uh, the programs also okay major advantages the advantages of cnc machine it eliminates human errors that means whatever the error which monotonous work say for example if you are making a, a turning operation the first turning operation that you make it using a conventional lathe may be of higher pre precision and accuracy the same thing if you have been asked to make around thousand samples it will not be possible. A human errors are meant to occur. That human errors can be avoided completely using this CNC machine. Even if there is any error that occurs in the CNC machine, it may be because of the wrong instructions given by a set of programs. Then higher flexibility. That means it can operate it for milling machine. It can write it for uh, drilling as well as uh, the lathe operations also. Flexibility is more. At any stage, you can change it very easily very high accuracy that is uh, expected and the wastage is minimum when we are human errors are and accuracy is there minimum human errors and the maximum high accuracy then we can expect a minimum wastage and suitable for batch production less space is required is okay so reduces the inspection cost inspection cost is reduces because of the higher accuracy itself more operational safety because however the human 
or a person will doesn't comes into picture at all obviously we just we will give the setup programs automatically we just only fix the work piece so the entire work will be done by this computer memory only the finished product will come in to the end so obviously human interaction will not be there much in operating the machine tools so operational safety will be more quality of product is high because of the higher accuracy and precision and few of the disadvantage of software cnc machines are initial cost is very high it requires a skilled programmer who can write a program and it is not suitable for small scale productions because the higher initial investment it will be always worth using for larger productions maintenance cost is more this is what the things okay